Jamin here. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss any videos I produce. Thank you guys who are supporting the Patreon channel. You guys make everything that I do happen. You've been so supportive all these years. Just thank you again for giving a few dollars a month. Now, guys, if you want to get access to some of my free swing dance lessons, I've just updated a lot of it. Um, a lot of different courses I've put in this uh, conglomerate of lessons uh, for you. So check it out in the description below. Now, today I'm going to be taking a look at a Strictly Lindy competition at an event called, it looks like Spring Lindy Workshop 2022. It looks really exciting uh, based on how the dancers are standing, I'm assuming, from this in this thumbnail. I don't know if they're advanced but they kind of look poised to just get into it. So I can assume that most of the dancers are going to be pretty high level. The, the, it just looks like it, it's going to be that case. And generally it is with the Strictly Lindy Finals. Now, um, I'm excited. Usually at this level, judges don't really have to scrutinize and see if dancers can swing dance. This is a level that's a bit higher than that. Most of the Most of the competitors have an aptitude for... Um, really good choreography and uh, social dance. And so I look at this competition to see how well they can vacillate between their choreography and smoothly transitioning back into social dance in such a way where it all looks choreographed, but yet still natural. So I'm excited to take a look at this one and give you guys my thoughts. So stick around and I will give you my thoughts right after this. All right, here we go. Oh, some familiar faces in the crowd. This looks like it might be, uh, I don't know where this at, but I, I see some of my Spanish friends. All right. Yes. I like this. This is really nice and natural. So far, I think I appreciate the first couple just a little bit more. I think they, they had a natural chemistry, uh, an energy that yeah, was a bit more symmetrical. So that, that's, a, that's who I would pick uh, initially. Great. Oh, so judges we must pick <laughs> Oh, some pick some sweets. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Now you never know who's at events. It's pretty cool that they're uh, showing some of the judges that are there. Usually the judges tend to be the teachers also. And uh, I love getting a chance to see other teachers at events. We don't get a chance to see them dance much. You know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of dancing. So, yeah, so it looks like uh, I think they might pick the other couple. I would pick the couple green. I'm in green. I heard the striped shirt. Uh, no, no, she wasn't the striped shirt. They just were hugging. Uh, she had the green skirt on. Um, I loved their symmetry, thought their choreography was great, it wasn't too forced, and uh, I felt that they had a better control over the technique, uh, where it didn't look like they were 
uh, struggling to connect with each other at certain points. And sometimes that happens when you're doing a Strictly because clearly it's choreographed in certain spots and then it's not choreographed in other spots. And sometimes you have a hard time gelling that transition. So let's see what happens here. Who's next? Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, yes, I know both of these. Okay, yeah, this is good. I've seen both of these uh, couples. Yes! Yes, good transition. I really love to see aspects of dancers that they can't control, like their physical anatomy. Most of the time they can't control how tall they're gonna be or how short they're gonna be, but they, they usually do a lot with what they have. And I, and I appreciate the dancers who have extreme assets, like really tall or really short, uh, because it makes you have to pay attention to how they use it. Yeah, this is good, this is good. Yes. Oh man, both of these are good. Both of these are good. I, I prefer the tightness of the other couple. The taller gentleman and the shorter follower. I think there's a tighter connection that they have with each other. And um, I really like their transition into their initial solo jazz uh, choreography more. I think I think it was uh, more surprising, but it was also something that stood out just a little bit more. I think it's because of their natural physical attributes. There, there's something that you pay attention to when you have a really tall person and someone who's not as tall as them. So that's who I would pick. Uh, both of these couples are phenomenal. I've seen many of these dancers over the years develop, and it's amazing to see how they haven't really changed who they are. This is so good. They've only just gotten better doing what they do. So big, big shout out to both of these couples. This is so good to see. So let's see. Uh, yeah, you heard what I, my verdict. Uh, I picked a couple on, on the left. Tall gentleman, short lady, or just maybe just a tall gentleman. <laughs> no, everybody's short against a tall person. So. That's what I would have picked, folks. Uh, I don't know who the other judges picked. You know, everybody's just kind of all over the place, but it's kind of a majority rule, so pretty much it's all subjective in that case. Uh, it's kind of a, a contest to see how many more people like you versus another one. Um, like I said, again, this is a level of dance where it just it really is subjective. It's kind of what you're looking for, so everybody has a different thing that they're looking for and they want to see, and... It's kind of a luck of the draw. It really is a, just a gamble to see if you, uh, whatever you're doing lines up with what other people are judging, their expectations. And it's kind of, it's kind of difficult because you don't know what's in a judge's mind, <laughs> nor do you know what they're, uh, uh, you know, what they're looking for or if it changes. You know? Okay, so we're down to these two. So let's see. Uh, ooh, I like that. I like. Yeah, I like this energy. This one, this one's tighter than their last one. <laughs> yeah. I like when people breathe uh, with their choreography. What I mean by breathe is they take a break and they do a little bit of improvisation. At the strictly level, I like it when it's a bit more intelligent. I don't like it when it's too lazy. Um, I, I just think dancers at this level can work a little harder at making those transitional breaks up in contrast to uh, seem a little bit more dynamic. Yes. Okay, okay, this was tight. <laughs> oh man, this was tight again, this was tight again. This came down to what they did when they were just kind of breathing and improvising. And I prefer the couple uh, on the right, uh, you had the blue, she had the green. Um, 
again, it just it's all preference, guys. I, I prefer when people do something that looks a little bit more as if they've tried, they're trying a little bit, you know, not just kind of going through the motions. So let's talk about this one. Man, I was entertained by that. I, I genuinely was entertained. And I, I got to say, it's a, it's a very complex level of entertainment that I felt because many of these dancers that were in this video, I've seen over the years. I mentioned that in, in some of my previous comments while the video was playing. And I, if I can recall right, many of these students have been in my classes before. So I've been able to look and see their maturation and I see progress. That's what I love to see in swing dancing is generational progress. And in this case, I see a healthy progress. I see dancers who have really refined many of the things that they've learned in class. They're heroes in their generation. They watched and they modeled a lot of their stylistic cues after. But then I also see just a vestige of, of the future, just a, a peak, an open door, and a glimpse of where they can start adding new things to fill in new steps for the future, new little walkways for the, the next generation. And I think that's the healthy way that every art develops is you always see a, um, a, a, a delicate balance of teacher and student. And then there's a transition from the teacher to the student in a sense of empowering them to say, you're next. Now, what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> right. And I, I think I think we don't have that enough in dance. They have that. They have a lot of that in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Don't get me going on that. That's my new thing right now. Really excited about it. There is this sense of real discipleship and respect for those who have come before. And it's it's not so much for the people. It's a respect for the knowledge itself and those who carry that knowledge have to have the respect because their their bodies are limited they could you know they could die at a certain point and that knowledge could go with them or those people can translate that knowledge into someone else and transfer it into their consciousness and so i feel that these dancers have grasped the the purpose of learning and they're doing something with it that's really impressive <laughs> really impressive that it almost brings a tear to my eye think about it but i love that I love that, and I, I want to see more. I, I really do. I'm excited to see where Lindy Hop is right now, and um, I, let me give you my comments on this one. Let me tell you, first off, my favorite couple wasn't any of the ones that the, the judges picked. Now, don't forget, guys. You have to look at things for what they are. In this case, most of the time, judges are just going to pick who they liked. Keep that in mind. It, it, it does not directly connect to their value of or their perception of you being able to do the dance well. It's a matter if they like what you did because you are, are doing really well right now, I mean, to be in this competition. So don't get it twisted. Don't get confused. Don't think that, you know, what a judge says in this kind of context where it's a lot of preference and, you know, personal opinion that that dictates the value of your dance. You have to be very careful or you'll you'll constantly be fighting to figure out what people want you to be and then you don't end up developing and going further into the future and pushing the dance forward. You end up going backward and you don't wanna do that. So just listen carefully to when people give you insight about your dancing because you're totally fine. And this was great. So let me give you the one first that I thought was the best for me. Remember I mentioned in the beginning, I wanted to see how easily the dancers could go from choreography to social dance and not make it look too jarring. A lot of times people have trouble with that. And I feel the my favorite couple was this couple. They literally did the very thing I was looking for. And I felt they did it the best. Best meaning they transitioned in a way where it looked natural. There wasn't a whole lot of moments where I could say, okay, this is clearly choreographed. No, it just looked like their choreography was enhancing the social dancing aspects of what they're doing. Like this, I know she had to kick out there. Even this, I know certain aspects have to be choreographed because they're not connecting with each other in a way that's natural to make it social, but how they're flowing in between the social dance and the choreography is there. This, this is what I was looking for. And again, 
even me look at look her lifting up that leg like that that was perfect that was perfect and again me as a judge saying that's what I'm looking for is my opinion. That's what I value. That's what I'm putting out there as a judge. And I would probably just be that one guy. You know, if everybody's pointing this way, I'm going to point in the other direction. If it's honest, if that's really what I feel, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm not just going to just keep it in my mind. I don't like to blur the lines between, you know, what's objective and subjective. I like to put it out there. So that, you know, people know I'm not just trying to control you and have this sense of power over people. It's not about that. This is really about helping you discover you and entertain an audience who's looking to cheer you on, not hold you back. OK, so for me, that's who that's they nailed what I was looking for. Now, there were some other things I was looking for, too. You guys know me. I'm always looking for the, the most distinct quality, the most unique thing that stands out in a way that makes me excited. And I want to, you know, jump up or just totally be transfixed by what I'm seeing. And I feel, for me, my, that couple was this couple right here. And I, I talked about them a lot while they were dancing. And that's usually a good sign. It just keeps, you know, whatever they're doing keeps me glued. It's the couple on the left, guys. You see them, he's really tall. She's got kind of like a green shirt on. I loved right here, their body position, the shapes. I like how his body is kind of bent over to compensate for her height. And it just creates this dynamic that says, you don't know, oh yeah, you see that break? You don't know what's gonna happen. You hear the audience respond to that? They didn't know it was gonna happen because I think his, his body, his size was kind of distracting. So you can see every movement he makes and it hides his partner's movement. So by the time she moves, it's a big deal. And I, I love that. Uh, they, were, they were my favorite in terms of style. Style is another word I like to use to say, you know, how a person looks or, you know, how they move when they're doing their shapes. Now, they didn't do anything that was incredibly original. Most, most everybody didn't, you know, and that's not always a bad thing, too. You know, sometimes people are just good craftsmen. They want to be... Uh, replicating a lot of the moves that they've learned and they do the mo those moves well. And I have no problem with that either. That's good. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, their uniqueness wasn't necessarily based on something they were doing. It was based on just their physical makeup. And I loved that. Sometimes that is the unique thing. Them just being themselves. <laughs> him being taller and him, him, her being shorter and them doing basic swing outs, tuck turns and Susie Q's and all of that looks hyper exaggerated because of those natural attributes. Now, is that fair that everybody else isn't tall and I like them? Well, it's just simply not fair. That's how life is. Sometimes people have better talent in other areas and some people aren't as good. It's just the way it is. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong that's happening. So that's my opinion, guys, over these uh, couples. Big shout out to the other couples, too. <laughs> they were they were just as good now everybody that got pushed forward i'm sure they got pushed forward because of uh a couple of judges probably liked their styling of it i i liked their style i felt there was a couple there was a couple he had the ponytail i believe they were really good i liked their elasticity there was just like a tightness to their movement and um yeah that that was really cool that was really cool there i felt that their second set was better than their first set, you know, when they were competing. But yeah, I really liked them. And then of course the other couple, well, you know, he had the blue on, she had the green. They were just, just dynamic. It was altogether good. I see growth guys. This is so good. I see growth. I don't just see um, a rebellion for rebellion's sake. I don't see people just trying to get attention at the expense of Lindy Hop. I didn't see that at all. I see people who love Lindy Hop, and they're just making it happen. So that's super cool. What did you guys think? Who was your favorite? What did you like? Let me know in the comment section below. There's uh, so many videos to watch. I've got so many to do, and it takes so much time. So thank you guys uh, who are supporting this channel through Patreon. It makes it fun. It makes it worth my while uh, to know that people actually want to see this. So you're putting your money where your mouth is. And uh, I, I love to give you guys my conjecture and a little bit of uh, analysis on what's going on with all things swing dancing. If you guys want to join my community, 
you can do that. I have a very special tight knit community online. It's called, guess what? Street Smart Swing Community. <laughs> there you go. And really, I have a new website. So this is a, a designed website to help you guys have a bit more functionality than what you would get on Patreon. And so I had a couple people sign up today and everything is open. So if you want access to all my personal work, the things that I'm working on, I'll be posting it every single week. And you get access to my entire catalog, my Lindy Hop blueprint on how I teach, uh, how I teach beginners on the street in like 30 minutes. How do I teach people at you know major events? The same contexts that I use in terms of helping people learn Lindy Hop quickly, you're going to be able to get that for yourself, but also to help you teach it to other people. So come join my community. We'll be doing live streams and all that good stuff, good Q&As. Uh, just for you guys. So with that said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Be civil. Keep it playful. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my community online. Take care.